I want to salute the judges of the Supreme Court as well. Um, it was straight to the point. President Tinubu applauds Supreme Court's verdict confirming his victory in the February presidential election. We will be glad, very, very glad to play the role of opposition. And I want to challenge the government that they should be on their feet and be ready. Labour PDP react to Supreme Court's judgment express disappointment but urge Nigerians not to lose faith in the prospect of a greater Nigeria. And, and House of Representatives set to investigate frequent loss of firearms and ammunition in the Nigeria police. Good evening. Welcome to NT Network News. I'm Cyril Stober in Abuja and joining me from Lagos is Hingino John Adams. Just to remind you, you can watch this news live on our website, nta.ng slash live, and on our other social media handles displayed on your screen. Starting off tonight from the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court has upheld the declaration and return of Bola Ahmed Tinubu as the duly elected president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. The seven-man panel of justices, headed by Justice Iyangu Kuro, in a unanimous verdict, dismissed all the two appeals challenging the victory of President Bola Tinumbu in February's presidential election. Austin Ayibi of our Judiciary Desk reports. The Supreme Court commenced the judgment with a ruling on whether to admit fresh evidence which bordered on the deposition of alleged false certificate by the President. While it held that it has jurisdiction to hear the application, it refused to accept the fresh evidence as it will amount to opening the case all over. The court held that appellant failed to take advantage of the 180 days provided by the Electoral Act 2022 for the determination of petitions to obtain the document sought to be tendered from Chicago State University. On the main appeal, which formulated seven issues for determination bordering on non-compliance by INEC to the Electoral Act 2022, refusal to extend time for additional witnesses and documents 25% requirements for a candidate to win presidential election as it affects FCT, electoral fraud among others, the court resolved all against the appellants and upheld the decision of the election petition court. The court dismissed the appeal in its entirety. The Supreme Court equally in the appeal by the presidential candidate of Labour Party, Peter Ubi, having adopted all resolutions reached in Article's case, dismissed the appeal. To congratulate the leaders of the opposition political parties because it is better for them to resolve to judiciary which they have done so it's about everybody it's not about a party it's not about an individual and if we do not come together now um, then we'll have ourselves to blame um, opposition is not you, you don't you don't oppose for the sake of opposition uh, elections are over litigation is over all litigation must come to an end now is the time for governance distractions over i want to salute the judges of the supreme court as well um, it was straight to the point um, and i believe that this judgment uh, would be seen worldwide as that uh, which is in line with global best practices in law collected or having the status quo you must not win FCT before you are declared president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. That FCT is like another state. The judgment put to rest all contending issues about the 2023 presidential election from the Supreme Court, Austin Anyebe, NT News. And Nigerians can now expect more dividends of democracy from the current administration. As President Bola Tinubu says, his full concentration is now on how to deliver good governance that will improve the socio-economic life of the citizens. The president was reacting to this Thursday's Supreme Court verdict, which gave final validation to his victory in February's presidential election. State House correspondent Musbao Namwahab reports on this moment. One last pronouncement to confirm the security of his job. And for this moment, every other engagement would have to be on hold as the man in front set his gaze on the TV. 
expecting the final seal on his mandate. The anxiety was pervasive with his subordinates also watching with bated breath. Certainly, any pronouncement would have a ripple effect. And finally, the most anticipated moments came. Bola Hamad Tinubu is the valid president of the most populous black nation in the world. As the five-star general, yes, I will command him to congratulations, congratulations. 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 On this day, the doors of the most revered office in the land became wide open as the disciples who saw it all at the court returned. But this victory is not for the number one alone. <laughs> and for the man at the center, destruction of litigations is now over and time to deliver on the mandate just revalidated. The judgment of the Supreme Court put a stop to shenanigans, put a stop to innuendos, put a stop to lies or trial in the media and public place. The court has demonstrated in this visible commitment to rule of law and humanity and their commitment to do justice for all Nigerians regardless of it, uh, ethnic, religious, or any other biases. So we use the strength of our diversity to build a stronger and prosperous Nigeria. And that's my belief. Ready to double his efforts, but is equally calling for the support and commitment of Nigerians to the Project Nigeria. And it is important that we recognize that we have no other country but this one. So we better be committed to it, not for the sake of our own self aggrandizement our commitment to the values, the creed of dedication, patriotism, and commitment to the value of this country it is extremely important that we have a change of mindset for the sake of our country not for us but for our children and grandchildren great grandchildren from the state house musbao dan wahab nc news Meanwhile, President Bola Tinubu has been receiving guests on a congratulatory visit following the Supreme Court's judgment. State House correspondent Musbao Anwahab brings us reactions to the President's victory. Soon after the pronouncement are given final validation to the victory of President Bola Tinubu uh, at the 2023 February 25th, uh, presidential election, all roads lead to the State House as parties towards members of the Federal Executive Council and of course uh, some state governors came around to celebrate with the presidents and they have been reacting to the verdict of the Supreme Court. We believe that God gives power so and God has affirmed that the Nigerian people freely gave the mandate to Sen Senator Mola Ametinubu to lead this country for the next four years. And this is what's happening at farm today. The president has taken off beautifully, beautifully. And he has the interest of the people at heart. So far, the choices he's making, they're tough. But at the end of the day, they will make for a better tomorrow. So we're very happy with what has happened today. His victory is not just a victory for the, um, for the nation, but particularly those of us who are quite warmed up to be on the same page of growth and development as he is intending. It is a larger victory for all of us. It is clear, crystal clear to all Nigerians that our president won this election free, fair. And I congratulate INEC as well for a job well done. I think the highest you know, judicial body in our country has expressed themselves you know, very clearly and there were no descending voices it was all seven of them that were on the same page and so what that tells us is that whatever might have been a difference let's put that behind us there is always one victor 
at a time. This is a Swaju's time. They should all take heart, come and join hands with him, so that we move Nigeria to a greater level. All the judicial issue has been exhausted now, and uh, it is now time for governors. I think it's now time for everyone to get together so that we can rebuild our country, rebuild the economy, support Mr. President, you know, and I'm sure Mr. President will be more than happy to call on all those, even those who have taken him to, to court, you know, to call on them to come and give their contributions, because as far as this country is concerned, we need everybody in order to move on. And now this victory is not only for Mr. President, even all the uh, members of the Federal Executive Council who came around and uh, other aides are also celebrating that this victory is also for them. Their job has been reassured and they can now fully concentrate on what they have to do to contribute to the development of the nation. Right, most of all. And former President Muhammad Buhari has commended the Supreme Court's decision affirming President Tinubu's victory. In a statement released by Garbashehu, Buhari emphasized that the verdict reaffirms the collective will of the majority of the people. He also conveyed his best wishes to President Tinubu and his team as they continue to lead Nigerians through the renewed hope agenda. And reactions have continued to trail uh, the Supreme Court's verdict confirming the victory of President Bola Tinubu, Ruth Aguele has a compilation of the congratulatory messages. In a statement, Deputy President of the Senate, Senator Barao Jibrin, described the judgment as a victory for democracy, urgent appellants to join hands with President Tinubu to address the challenges facing the country. Similarly, Speaker of the House of Representatives, Tajuddin Abbas, has congratulated President Bola Ahmed Tinubu on his victory over the Supreme Court judgment, noting that the victory is not only for President Tinubu and the ruling All Progressives Congress, but for all Nigerians. The National Chairman of the Governing All Progressives Congress, Dr. Abdullahi Umar Ganduji, has also applauded the Supreme Court decision, which upheld the victory of President Bola Ahmed Tinubu in the presidential election. Ganduji says the outcome of the Supreme Court verdict will now pave way for the president to concentrate on implementing the renewed hope mandate of the APC for the benefit of Nigerians. Former Governor of Nasarawa State and APC Chieftain Tanko Almakura says the verdict of the Supreme Court heralds a new season of hope for Nigeria. Almakura congratulated President Bola Tinubu and the APC, expressing confidence that the renewed hope agenda is on course. In the same vein, Minister of Labour and Employment Simon Bakola Long and former Director General of the Tinubu Shatima Campaign Council has described the validation of President Bola Tinubu's election victory by the Supreme Court as an affirmation of the overwhelming mandate given to him by Nigerians. Ruth Aguele, NT News. And still more on the Supreme Court judgment, political correspondent Usman Akwanga has more reactions from across the country. The atmosphere is now calm following the outcome of the Supreme Court judgment, which put all legal encumbrances to a permanent rest. From Lagos, Bolaji Akim reports that political gladiators described the judgment as a good omen and appealed to candidates of opposition parties to accept the verdict in good faith. I'm not sure we have had this uh, concerted in terms of a uh, political trail in this country. It's been gall a gallantly fought election process. In the interest of the nation, we have to move forward. From Mina, the Niger state capital, correspondent Usina Musa reports that Governor Mohamed Omar Bagu commends the Supreme Court for the sound judgment and congratulated President Tinubu for the feat. Today, it has given us again uh, a direction so that we can face governance. And from Ibadan, correspondent reports that stakeholders say as the Supreme Court finally decides on the outcome, attention will now be shifted to governance and development of the country. Because the Supreme Court was not a court of first hearing, I knew that no matter how monumental had been the new evidences found by Article 
the Supreme Court will be restricted by the provision of our own president. But most fundamentally, it's a judgment that's just based on logics and sound reasoning. And from Enugu, James Oparokocha reports that political thinkers described the judgment as commendable and urged Nigerians to unite behind President Tinubu for meaningful development of the country. It is now for him to bring to reality all those promises, all those visions he had for Nigeria. Thank God that um, with uh, this uh, verdict, then he, he has been exposed to a lot of opportunity to use his uh, cerebr cerebral uh, sagacity to navigate his uh, uh, campaign mantra of uh, the renewed hope. Abubakar Akwanga, NT News. And joining me now in the studio is Echo Ejembi Echo, a senior advocate on a senior advocate of Nigeria. Thanks for being with us on Network News tonight. Thank you. Well, how would you describe the Supreme Court's verdict dismissing the appeals for lacking in merit? And how would these verdicts expand Nigeria's jurisprudence? Well, it's it's a simple thing. The system of governance and jurisprudence that we run is still decisive. The Supreme Court is the apex court. Whatever the Supreme Court says in any particular scenario, legal and factual, binds every other court in the land. So this decision, this verdict has set a new path for every other court to follow. Well, e equality of votes uh, resonates in these verdicts and uh, ends the debate on 25% vote in the FCT. What are your thoughts on this? That issue has been contended. It has been decided upon. It puts an end to all the doubts, all the contentions and conjecture that any lawyer or political partisan player may have. The Supreme Court has looked at the Constitution and in their wisdom they have said that the FCT for the purposes of declaring the winner of elections like any other state. So mm. that puts an end to that. All right, um, as the justices said, uh, there must be an end to litigation. In your opinion, you think the Electoral Act, as it currently stands, uh, leaves, still leaves loopholes for litigations and upcoming elections, and what should be done differently to reduce the number of election-related litigations? I mean, these are the things that are holding back so many things. Yeah, well, it's a question of rejigging what we have. For instance, in the course of this election season, we have seen the lacunas that exist in the Electoral Act. Nobody can run away from that fact. We need to take the Electoral Act back to the surgery room. We need to excise what needs to be removed and we need to add upon it. It's not a 100% perfect document, if you ask me. I think it needs to be reviewed. I think steps need to be put in place. We cannot continue this way. Every election circle the volume of litigation is, is, is outstanding. Our lawmakers have to sit down and think up the better way to do this because it takes up judicial time and it takes up even governance time. All right. All right. We'll have to leave it there for now. Uh, Senior Advocate of Nigeria, Echo, EJMB Echo, thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Well, the People's Democratic Party. PDP has reacted to the judgment of the Supreme Court in the petition filed by it and its presidential candidate Atiku Abubakar against the declaration of the All Progressives Congress, APC, and Bolatinubu as the winners of uh, the February presidential election by INEC. In a statement by party spokesman Dibbo Lugwagba, the party said it was disappointed with the apex court's reasons for affirming the victory of President Tinubu and urged party supporters to keep on supporting the party. Meantime, leadership of the Labour Party on its own has expressed surprise over the Supreme Court judgment on the presidential election, which upheld President Balatinubu's election. National Chairman of the party, Julius Aburi, who addressed the press conference in Abuja, said despite the court judgment, the party is convinced that the majority of Nigerians voted for it during the election, the outcome notwithstanding. He called on Nigerians 
not to lose hope in the collective quest to build a better Nigeria and urge all supporters of the party, especially those elected on its platform, to remain firm with the dream of the party. Do not partner with the government. We are going to stand and play the role of opposition. I want to say it very clearly that the soul of democracy is opposition. And part of the reasons why we have crisis in our country is because before now, we've not had credible, viable, and vibrant opposition political party. So we'll be glad, very, very glad, to play the role of opposition. And I want to challenge the government that they should be on their feet and be ready. All right, we'll take a short break here. When we return, there'll be more news. Stay with us. Thanks for staying with us. The House of Representatives has mandated its standing committees on national security and intelligence, as well as police affairs, to investigate the frequent loss of firearms and ammunition in the Nigeria police armament from 2012 to 2022. This is a sequel to a motion by Representative Salman Idris on the floor of the House. National Assembly Correspondent Mitari Ipen tells us more. Lawmakers consider the growing number of unaccounted ammunition and firearms either lost or stolen from the armory of the Nigeria Police Force without any trace of formal report as a major security concern. The House is disturbed that the Nigerian police have lost sufficient firearms which is enough to fill about two to three infantry divisions which were not reported. Representative Ayokunle Isiaka, in a matter of urgent public importance, called for relief for Nigerians displaced by the recent flood disaster in Isheri, Ojodu areas of Ogun State. The House resolves, Mr. Speaker, urge the federal government to declare the flooding of Isheri, Ojodu and environs as a national emergency disaster. The House debated and passed for second reading the bill which seeks to provide for the establishment of the Federal Institute of Technology and Entrepreneurship, Bungudu, Zamfara State, as well as the bill for an act to amend the Federal Medical Centers Act and establish the Federal Medical Center, Oshobo, Oshun State. It is a certain argument that the government cannot provide jobs for all the youth, so we therefore need to train our youth and other citizens the knowledge and the skills to enable them to create jobs and the world. I want to seek for the support of this bill so that we can have access, direct access, to medical treatment in Oshobo. Those in support of this uh, bill be read for the second time, she say aye. Aye. Those against, she say nay. The ayes have it. Representative Paul Namchi moved the motion calling for intervention over the hardship being experienced by members of the Academic Staff Union of Universities. Interface with ASU and the federal government to resolve the eight months outstanding salary of no work, no pay of the lecturers and report back to the within two weeks for further legislative action. From the National Assembly, Mitairi Ikwen, NTA News. The Senate has confirmed Dr. Musa Adamu Aliu as chairman of the Independent Corrupt Practices Commission in line with the provisions of the ICPC Act. National Assembly correspondent Lami Ali reports that two members of the Federal Judicial Service Commission were also confirmed. The ICPC chairman, while responding to questions from lawmakers, says his tenure will change the narrative in fighting corruption through strategic collaboration. We have to make efforts to ensure that we trace assets subject of corruption and recover them. Revert back to the government or hand it over to the, the victim of the crime. Professor Gaji Ntata and Saka Bolaji Suleiman were screened and confirmed as members of the Federal Judicial Service Commission. Let me on behalf of the Senate congratulate these. The nominees have been confirmed and uh, we look forward that they will put their best for, to the service of this great nation. Their appointment by Mr. President is called, is called to serve this country. Built to establish Federal University of Technology and Environment in Akiti State, sponsored by Senate leader Upeyami Bamidele, 
Pass second reading. Modern institution that will develop world class technologists as well as human resources that can sustainably manage our nation's economy. We have to catch up with the world by developing our human resources. The motion from Senator Olubiyi Oluwole urging federal government support to those affected by communal clashes in parts of Ocean State was adopted. Thousands of my good people in Ocean Central District were killed, displayed, and their properties were destroyed following the communal clash between Ifo and the local communities in Ulu, Irek, Badun. Relevant committees of the Senate were mandated to investigate implementation of the Petroleum Industry Act as moved by Senator Anyek and Basi. The PIA has not made clear implementation plan for situation such as the now emerging trend of exit of IOCs and has not holistically resolved issue bordering on protection of interests of the federal government, producing states, host communities, or provided future assurances. Senator Adetu Kumbo Abiru got the support of the Senate in his call to authorities to assist victims of flooding living in coastal communities of Lagos and Ogun states following the release of water from Oyo Dam from the National Assembly, Lami Ali, NTA News. For the next three days, how wives of top government functionaries and other female officials can uphold the image and integrity of their office while working with security operatives to ensure their own protection will take center stage at a seminar on protocol and security, which opened in Abuja on Thursday. Convener of the seminar, Nigeria's First Lady Uluremi Tinubu, says it's important for women to be acquainted with their role in society. State House correspondent Adeni Taiwo has more. By virtue of their offices and associations, women gathered in this hall belong to a special bracket, that of VIPs, whose images and security matter to the society. In order to fit in, they must learn new etiquette and other protocols, the main reason for convening this seminar. It is back to the classroom for these women here, who in the next three days will be taking through the rudiment of security protocols, diplomatic and social etiquette as demanded by their offices and new status. This is the kind of impartation and learning opportunities that you tend to get when you have a professional teacher as the first lady and mother of the nation. She is a firm believer in education as a functional tool for empowering women. In today's world, understanding and applying the principles of protocol, etiquette and security are essential for us to be able to carry out our duties with utmost competence. These elements play a crucial role in maintaining order, safety, and harmony in our interactions, be it in diplomatic or social relations. A paper on the Nigerian police, the executives, and the law, delivered by the Inspector General of Police, Kaudi Egbetokun, is the cutting razor at the seminar, followed by another one on state security and the executives presented by the Department of State Security. Apart from calling for more synergy among protocols and security details attached to VIPs, there are two papers and others that followed harped on why female VIPs must be more intentional about their conduct around personal staff while being more careful on and off the social media. Operational errors occur everywhere in the world. It's not only limited to Nigeria. But we don't condole operational errors because we believe that our officers have been well trained before they are deployed. Where a security person goes beyond his brief, or a protocol person goes beyond the brief, or even where the principal also goes beyond, you know, what should be acceptable. So the essence of talking to us today is to know that both of these persons who work for you are working for your interest. Thereafter followed a no old bad engagement that saw former first lady, then Patience Jonathan, making impute. Clinton, Obama, them coming out, you don't see their securities. But they are working and they are somewhere watching. 
watching very elegant. So can't we do that way yet? We also, you know, heard about how the principal can dictate the tone of what happens around them. At the time that you expect them to protect you, you are already using them as house help or you are using them for other form, uh, activities or duties. They will not be able to protect you. The seminar closes on Saturday. In the State House, Adeni Itaewo, NT News. What challenge farmers in Nigeria are facing is that of weed control. But now a trusted name in agri-input, Wakot Limited, is telling farmers in Nigeria to worry no more as it unveils the newest revolutionary herbicide product, Dragon Super, which is a non-selective post-emergence broad-spectrum herbicide used to control annual and perennial grasses and broadleaf weeds in Abuja. Alain Kaudu reports that the launch was used to appreciate 22 major distributors of Wakot Limited Company's products. Major challenge faced by farmers are weeds, which cause up to 90% yield loss if proper care is not taken. Going by statistics, uncontrolled weed growth in maize in Nigeria cause 18 to 60% yield loss, 51% in sorghum, 28 to 100% in rice, 48 to 90% in cassava, 70 to 91% in yam. Increasing weed population is caused by wrong use of herbicides, lack of skills in weed identification, and the correct matching of herbicides with weeds. Here is a solution to all of the listed problems, Dragon Super Agricultural Herbicide, a new product of chemistry, invention, and technology. Being a herbicide that prevents regeneration of weeds on farmlands, the product creates a new milestone in enhancing productivity in agriculture. Have those of Dragon Super Product, Wakot Limited Director of agri Impute Division, Murari Sharma says, It's a replacement of Paracot, which was having uh, almost a 3 liter per hectare. And this product is uh, just a half dose for farmer. And the uh, result means uh, that product was giving 15 days result, but uh, this product is giving more than one month. So it's a wonderful product for uh, Nigerian farmers. For the distributors of Wakot Limited products, the company and its products have result visibility, commitments, transparency. Um, in terms of quality, it's a product you can trust. The advantage of this product is it's not going to affect the soil. With its head office located in Lagos State, Wakot Limited is a leading company in agri imputes in Nigeria and contributing to the advancement of agriculture in the country. Olai Nkaujo, NTA News. Members of the National Union of Road Transport Workers have resolved to support the new leadership to regain the association's lost glory. This was at the Delegates Conference of the Union in Abuja. Adibola Brooklyn reports that all state chairmen of the coalition attended the meeting. From north to south, east to west, members of the National Union of Road Transport Workers converged on Abuja for the 10th Quadrennial National Delegates Conference. Uphold and defend. Elected chairman from 36 states of the Federation and the FCT were inaugurated where the Deputy President Aliu Isaure is to serve as acting president until election is held for that position. Minister of Labor and Employment Simon Lalong in a message commended the resolution of the dispute rocking the union and expressed confidence in the new leadership. I believe that the inauguration of the new leaders today will mark a new beginning in your union. We are ready to restart all the program we had in the past with NRTW. Very, very best stakeholders. Because without you, there will not be road safety. Our position in the ITF must. We should make sure that we bring back the lost glory and even put more membership so that we can take our right position at the global space. We have to put the state on hold and immediately we sat down the first, our first meeting 
we are going to address that, that the, the issue of state. We want the general public, more particularly the commuters to expect, uh, expect from them is peace and tranquility in the union. The union appeals to the federal government to factor its members in arrangement for palliatives. Adebola, Brooklyn, NTA News. Time to go over to Hingino John Adams in Lagos for more news. Hingino. Thank you, Cyril. The federal government is set to revitalize the health sector through addressing maternal mortality rate and ensuring that all health institutions in the country operate at optimal level. Minister of State for Health and Social Welfare, Dr. Tunji Alausa, disclosed this during a tour of federal government health institutions in Lagos. Bolaje Akim completes the story. The mandate of ensuring a holistic turnaround in the nation's health sector tops the priority list of the Minister of State for Health and Social Welfare, Dr. Tunji Alausa. This informed his visit and on-the-spot assessment of some federal government health institutions in Lagos State, which include the Nigerian Institute of Medical Research, NEMA Federal Medical Library, and the Federal Psychiatric Hospital, Yaba. We'll get every support you need from the while interacting with the staff of the various health institutions, the minister said the present administration is working towards rejigging and changing the narrative in the health sector. At the end of his administration, we will have a sustainable health care that delivers the best care to our people. The citizens are the center of our world. They need to get the best care, like any civilized society. The minister was also at the Lagos Smith House Marina, where he informed Governor Babajide Sonwolu of the federal government's readiness to partner with the state in improving the health sector. President Bola Metinumbu has given us, given us the mandate to reshape, revitalize, and get Nigeria Health Care Delivery System to where it should be, where our citizens will have comprehensive health care. Lagos State, you know, uh, is more than, you know, um, ready and prepared you know, to, to come up with, you know, all of the various steps that will ensure that health is not only accessible, it's affordable. For the minister, the tour of the health institutions was an eye-opener to the challenges in the institutions, which he promised to look into. In Lagos, Bolaji Akim, NTA News. With the federal government exploring the digital economy to create more jobs for the teaming youths, experts in information and communication technology, ICT, have called on the government to ensure adequate protection for local businesses. The experts express this view as they examine the gains of digital economy. Larry Billy has details. Digital economy involves economic ventures requiring skills and sales of goods and services to meet specific demands using the internet. One of the renewed hope action plan of President Paul Atinubu is digital economy, with the aim of harnessing the nation's youthful population and ensuring they are gainfully employed. Before, the only way you could watch this interview is to have a TV, right? But today, you can upload this video on YouTube and people would watch it, right? Now, you uploading it on YouTube, you start having numbers of followers, right? The more followers you have, the more you might be able to generate some income, right? So that is, you know, um, digital economy. With federal government's commitment to making the sector one of its focal points, what expansion possibilities would it have for those already exploring it? It will expand the opportunity of exports and in which Nigeria will be in line as people like U.S. Indians who are actually taking the opportunity of digital economy to move their youth forward. So what you notice is that more employment is created because of the ease of doing business. Collection, analysis, and use of information to deliver goods and services to clients will require some technical know-how and training. ICT experts are urging federal governments to invest in mitigating attendant issues associated with digital economy, such as protection of confidential data of persons doing businesses online, cybersecurity to check activities of fraudsters, 
and environmental concerns. In Lagos, Larry Gulayi, NT News. Those are the reports from Lagos. We'll now take some messages. The news will be back with Benny in Abuja shortly. <laughs> Good to know you are still here and it's time to talk business. We'll start by telling you that the United States government says it has injected 188 billion naira into the Nigerian MSME space with a view to empowering more than 18,000 small businesses. A statement by the U.S. Agency for International Development says seven states of Benue, Cross River, Delta, Ebony, Kaduna, Kebbi and Niger are beneficiaries. The MSMEs are now able to expand business operations for increased food production, specifically for aquaculture, cowpea, maize, rice, and sow bean. The Minister for Finance and Coordinating Minister of the Economy, Wali Edun, says the compressed natural gas buses promised by the federal government to alleviate the suffering of Nigerians as a result of the removal of fuel subsidy will soon be delivered. This was at a town hall a meeting with management and staff of the ministry in Abuja, where the minister sought the support of all in helping him deliver on President Tinobu's mandate for the Nigerian economy. And a quick look at market equities lost some steam with a 0.18% decline at the end of today's trading session. A total of 267.6 million shares in 5,205 deals, corresponding to a market value of 5.110 billion naira, were traded. Today's data shows 19% decline in volume, 16% improvement in turnover, but 13% decline in deals. The current market capitalization is 36.9 trillion naira. Fidelity Bank recorded the highest volume of 39.8 million traded shares. Followed by Chams, 23.5 million, and Access Holdings, 20.6 million. That is business news, but network news continues after this break. President Bola Tinubu celebrates the life and legacy of the late patriarch of the Tinubu family, Alaji Kafarulu Ali Tinubu, on the 20th anniversary of his passing. President Tinubu extols the sterling qualities of the late patriarch, who was a distinguished public servant, lawyer, administrator, and philanthropist. The president recalls the invaluable advice, support, and guidance the late patriarch provided him when he served as the governor of Lagos State, saying he was passionate about good governance and always on hand to offer brilliant advice. And that concludes Network News tonight. Thank you for watching. I'm Cyril Stover. Good night.